In this video we're going to show you how to use the Profile Toolpath to create a number of different textured panels. All these will be based on vectors created using the Vector Texture Creation tool and that was covered in one of the drawing tutorials. Here we're just going to vary things like the tool shape and size and the depth of cut in order to create lots of different variations using those original designs. Let's begin by opening a new copy of the software. Let's start by opening an existing file and from the project folder we're going to select a vector texture underscore vector and hit open. This is the design file that was created in the drawing tutorial. Let's just take a look at what we have in here. If we come to the layer manager we can see that on the first layer if I just undraw the wave layer there we have this cutout vector which is just a simple rectangle. This is the size of the panel that we'd actually want to machine. Now when we're creating these texture panels though it's important that the tool enters and exit from the side of it so that the texture goes all the way across the panel. And that's why when we look at the texture vectors that we've created here you can see that they actually go further and come past the edge of the part that we would actually be cutting out. So the different patterns we've created we have one on the layer called wave there one on a layer called step, one on a layer called swirl and one on a layer called grain. Let's come back so that the wave layer is the one that we've got switched on, all the other layers, uh, all the three layers below that switched off there and that the wave layer is current and hit close. Now we're ready to go over to the toolpaths tab and start generating toolpaths with these vectors and show you the different types of panels that we can create. Let's come up and click on the icon here to switch to the toolpaths tab when we do that, the Design tab will be closed on the left, Toolpaths tab will open on the right. I'm just going to hit F to fit the 2D view into the window on the keyboard. And Before we generate a toolpath, we need to check our material setup for this part. So let's click on the Set button here. And It's important to note that if you plan to actually machine any of the examples that we're showing you in this tutorial, that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling you have available and whatever material you plan to machine these into. Here I'm just going to work with the same settings that we used originally to set the part up, so Z0 on the top of the block, material thickness 3 quarters of an inch, XY datum in the lower left corner, going to work with um, the clearance and plunge values we've got here and maybe reduce the home position down a little to something not quite so high. Go ahead and hit the OK button. In this video we're just going to use the profile toolpath and vary the tooling, size and shape and the depth of cut on the vector textures we've got to create different effects. Let's come up and click on the profile toolpath here going to select the vectors that I want to machine in this case. I'm going to start with a cut depth of 0.1 of an inch and I'm going to select from the tool database a quarter inch ball nose. I'm just going to take the default settings for this and go ahead and hit OK. Now in all cases when we're cutting these vector textures I want to machine with the center of the tool on the line so that each time the tool is going to pass along the vector here in order to cut it. Now notice here that I've got Show Advanced Toolpath Options checked off because I won't be needing those in this particular video. Let's go ahead and give this an appropriate name. So I'm going to call this first toolpath Wave underscore 025 BN to show it's being cut with a quarter inch ball nose tool. If we hit Calculate there, we'll see that automatically opens the 3D view in the Preview Toolpath window. I'm going to use a slightly different material here for the preview so let's switch to cherry and now I'm going to click on the button here just taking the default settings for this to preview the selected toolpath. Now what we can see there is quite an interesting effect but the spacing of the vectors here is larger than the diameter of the tool so I'm adding actually getting these flat surfaces on the top here. Now if I went back into the toolpath and changed so that the depth of cut was even a little bit less and hit calculate. If we reset the preview and re-preview that you can see we're just effectively getting the waves cut in here and we're getting the flat surfaces on the top. If I want to get an intersecting texture then I need to make sure that my tool is 
larger in diameter than the spacing I used when I set up the original set of vectors. Now in this case these vectors were set up with a 0.3 spacing. So if we actually went ahead and switched to a half inch ball nose tool then we should see that start to overlap. So let's again just reset the preview there, close this. Now I'm going to keep that original toolpath in the list there, come back into the profile toolpath form, change the cut depth back to 0.1 and this time I'm going to select a half inch ball nose. At the moment I don't have that in my tool database so I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to select this one here and I'm just going to edit that so that it's a half inch in name, half inch diameter and we'll alter the pass depth there to be 0.25 and I'll just take the default settings for the rest of that, hit apply and OK. So now we've selected a half inch tool, same settings for the rest of the form here and this time we'll call this toolpath wave underscore 05 BN to show the tool we're using and hit calculate. Now when we preview this we should see the fact that each of those lines is actually overlapping into the next one and so now I'm just going to get this kind of wavy ridge coming up to the top here for the texture that I'm generating with that combination of the vectors and that larger ball nose tool. Now let's go ahead and change the pattern we're using. Again, I'm just going to reset the preview, close the preview tool pass form there. I'm going to hit Control L on the keyboard to open up the layer manager. I'm just going to switch off the wave layer and switch on the step layer and just select that so that it's current. Now we'll go ahead and hit F12 on the keyboard to go back to just showing the toolpaths tab. I'm going to reopen the profile toolpath form and just click on the 2D view to select the new pattern there that we um, drew when we switched on that layer. Now let's go ahead and take exactly the same parameters that we used for the last toolpath, so cut depth 0.1, half inch ball nose tool cutting on the vectors. This time we'll call it step underscore 05 BN and let's look at what that setting gives us with a slightly different pattern. Again we can preview that to see what that's going to look like and similar to the other one but now you can see with a different set of vectors we're getting a different kind of effect there. Again making sure the tool's big enough to overlap um, so that it intersects with the next profile toolpath that's being cut there. Now we used a ball nose tool so far for all the toolpaths we've created but we can actually vary that by using a different shape tool. For instance in this case if we just reset the preview, close that again there come back into the profile form, make sure we've still got our vector selected in the 2D view which we have and now I'm going to hit select and I'm going to choose a V-bit tool. Now this time I want to use or we'll select the 90 degree V-bit to start with and hit OK to see what effect that gives us. We'll go with a cut depth of 0.15 and we'll call that step 90 V and hit calculate. Let's preview that now and see what that effect is. And we can see there that's quite nice. I've got this nice angled effect but I've got a few flat spots here and that's because the angle of the tool is too steep to intersect with the line next to it. Now to solve that I'd either need to choose a, a new vector texture where we've got um, spacing which is smaller or I could use a more widely angled bit. Perhaps we might want to just take that toolpath and edit it here so I can double click on it. I'm going to select from the tool database 120 degree V-bit. So let's just copy that there and edit the parameters for this. 120, let's check the diameter is right there and 120 in there too. Go ahead and hit apply. Pass depth um, is too deep at the moment for that tool with that angle so I just need to hit OK and change that to a value of 0.35, apply and OK. So now we've got a 120 degree V-bit selected. We'll change the name and hit calculate. Let's just reset the preview and preview that and now we should see that that tool is going to intersect when we've cut all of those different profile vectors. So that looks quite nice, quite a different effect than what we created when we were using the ball nose tool to cut this. Now let's go ahead and reset the preview again, close the preview tool pass form, control L to go back to the layer manager and now I'm going to switch off the step layer and switch on the swirl layer. Let's hit F12 to go back to the toolpath manager, 
click on the profile toolpath form again come back to the 2D view to select our new set of vectors here now I'm going to use the same set of parameters so cut depth 0.15 120 degree V bit on the vectors but you'll notice that when we created these vectors we added a bit of variation in the spacing so now we've got a slightly more random um, organic look to the vectors so let's call this toolpath swirl underscore 120 V and hit calculate preview that so we can see how that's going to look and again we get quite a nice effect there it's following those lines but now we'd have slight differences in variation with the height of the peaks here because the spacing is different it's not consistent anymore so again just showing you how you can get a slightly different effect there in this case we may also want to show you how you can uh, use in the ball nose again with this so let's reset the preview there close back in the profile change the cut depth back to 0.1 select the half inch ball nose again and we'll call this one swirl 05 bn and calculate and preview that and again there you can see we're just getting a slightly different effect by having that variation in spacing so that we're going to get slightly thicker peaks or, or deeper peaks in some areas than others now the last vector pattern that we've created is quite different to these others these were all based quite firmly on some kind of wave if we just reset the preview now and close the preview toolpass form a second we'll hit control L to go back to the layer manager I'm going to undraw that layer and switch on the grain layer making it current Let's hit F12 to go back to the toolpass tab if we click on the 2D view you can see this is quite a different looking set of vectors. If we zoom in you can see it's actually got some um, variation in it here which was um, added when we created this vector texture. Let's just hit F to fit that back in there. So now what I'm trying to do is effectively emulate some kind of a wood grain in this case. So let's go back to the profile toolpath but now what I'm going to do is select a smaller tool in this case. So cut depth for this is quite small we'll make 0.05 and I'm going to select a 1 8 ball nose tool these have a much closer spacing than the other tool paths we created Let's hit apply and OK to select that I'm going to still machine on the lines and I'm going to call this one grain 0125BN and hit calculate and if we preview that you can see that's going to give us quite an interesting sort of wood grain effect but again here the spacing was larger than the tool we've used there so I have got a few flat spots now I might be happy with that look that does look quite nice there but if I wanted to I could increase the size of the ball nose to get a slightly different effect if we just reset the preview there and double click on the toolpath we just calculated and select a quarter inch ball nose let's just change the name of the toolpath there to reflect that and hit calculate and preview and we can see that now those lines are completely overlapping because of the size of the tool and we get something which isn't quite as well defined but again is still very organic and natural looking kind of wood grain we reset the preview there another variation on this could be to use quite a steep sided V bit so if I close that go back to the profile in the 2d view we've still got our vector selected now I'm going to increase the cut depth a little bit for the V bit and we'll select the 90 degree tool here so we'll call this one grain 90 V hit calculate and now if we preview that now you can see we get a slightly more defined look to our wood grain there So you can see there how quick and easy it is to create many different types of effects with these vector textures just by using the profile toolpath and varying the tool size and shape and the depth of cut. Now once you are happy with the panel you created you could go ahead and cut it out so if we just close that there come back to the 2D view I may need to zoom in in order to select my rectangle there just go back over to the profile toolpath now and now what I want to do is cut all the way through the material so I could type Z equals select 
an appropriate end mill for this cut outside the vector and we can call that toolpath cutout and hit calculate and now if I preview that you can see that's going to machine through and I could double click to get rid of my waste material and of course we could run that cutout toolpath on any of the other toolpaths we've created in this example. So that pretty much concludes this particular tutorial. Let's go ahead and close the preview toolpath form there. We'll just go up to File, Save As, and in the project folder here, I'm going to save this as Vector Texture, and we'll call this Toolpath 2D, and hit Save so that that's saved in the project folder there. Now if you're running a version of Vectric software that supports 2.5D toolpaths and 3D models, then there's an additional tutorial that shows you how to create some different effects with the same set of vectors here using those types of toolpaths. That concludes this video.